Archimedes and the Golden Crown. Now the story I'm about to tell you is one of the strangest you may ever hear or read. But what makes it doubly wonderful is, it's all true. 2,300 years ago, there lived two marvelous men in the same city. One was the king of that city. The city was on the island of Sicily, which you can still find if you look on a map of Europe or a globe of the earth. Look for the country of Italy, shaped like a boot, sticking out into the blue Mediterranean Sea, and just off the toe of that boot, you'll find the island of Sicily. Well, 23 centuries ago, the Greeks settled there, and they had a king by the name of Hieron II. Why was he so wonderful? Because in a world that was at war, Hieron had made peace with all his neighbors. He had also brought wealth from trade to his city and his country. And he had passed a series of laws so just, so fair to everyone, that he was universally admired. But despite all this, he still had his problems, as you will hear. One day, the king called into his throne room a jeweler from his city. The king looked down from his throne and he said, Jeweler, I have decided that I need a new crown worthy of the king of this great land. And since you are a master with metals, I have chosen you to create this crown. Now, I will give you anything that you need in order to create this, to do your very best work. The jeweler bowed low and he said, Ah, your majesty, I am delighted. You honor me greatly. And I shall try to be worthy of your trust by creating the most beautiful, the most wonderful crown in the world. It will make you the envy of all the other rulers. Now I shall need, and he looked carefully at the king, I should say seven pounds of gold. The king turned to one of his servants, and he directed him, Go to the royal treasury and bring back precisely seven pounds of gold. While the servant was away, the jeweler was gazing at the king's head from all sides and measuring it for size. At last the servant returned with the seven pounds of gold, and the king handed this to the jeweler and said, Now, I want you to take your time. If you need weeks, even a few months, just get it right. I want this to be your very finest work. The jeweler said, I understand, sire, and indeed it will be a masterpiece, I promise you. Taking the gold and bowing again, the jeweler left. Weeks went by, months went by, and then at last one day, as the king was again seated upon his throne, the jeweler entered the throne room. The king's eyes lit up. Ah, uh, have you brought me my new golden crown? Indeed I have, your majesty, and I believe you will be pleased by it. The jeweler was carrying a box. He opened the lid of the box, and inside, sitting on some soft cloth, was the most beautiful golden crown. The king grinned, and he said, May I? Ah, it is indeed a thing of beauty, jeweler, and it, it, it fits me so beautifully. Why, it hardly feels as though I have seven pounds of gold on my head at all. I am pleased. And he reached down next to his throne and drew up a bag of gold. This he handed to the jeweler, and he said, This is for you, for the magnificent job you have done. Thank you. Ah, sire, indeed. I thank you. And the jeweler bowed his way out, and everyone was happy for a time. A few weeks later, as the king was walking in the corridors of his palace, he chanced upon one of his friends. He knew right away from the expression on his friend's face that something was wrong, and the king approached him and said, Now, uh, I can see uh, something's bothering you. Tell me, uh, what is it? At first his friend denied it, but the king insisted. What are friends for, if we cannot help one another in times of trouble? Tell me, what is your problem? But his friend looked at him and said, Well, strictly speaking, it's not my problem at all. It's your problem, your majesty. You see, two nights ago, I was out walking quite late, and as you know, there was no moon that night, so it was very dark. 
I decided to sit down for a few minutes on a low garden wall, and as I was sitting there in the shadows, two people approached, the jeweler who had made your crown with his wife, and they were talking and whispering in low voices and laughing to one another. I, well, I... Uh, go on, go on. Well, I hesitate to tell you, sire. I'm afraid it will only create a problem that you cannot solve. For you see, I heard them talking, and I... Well, I think I heard him tell her that he had not used the seven pounds of gold that you gave him in order to make the crown. Uh, what do you mean? Anyone can see it's a golden crown. Well, he used some of the gold... And he kept some for himself and replaced it with silver. He did. I'll have him rest it. But, sire, I'm not certain that that is what he said. They were speaking in such a low tone, and they only stepped by me for a few moments. I, I cannot be sure. The king was very upset. What do I do? If the man is a thief, I cannot let him walk freely in the city. And yet, and yet how can I accuse him without proof? Up and down the corridors of his palace, the king walked, pacing and thinking, but he couldn't figure out a way to prove whether the jeweler had or had not stolen some of his gold. At last, he slapped his hands together and he said, I know precisely whom I should ask for help, my cousin, Archimedes. Now, who was Archimedes? Archimedes was one of the two or three greatest mathematicians in all history, a man who loved numbers. He practically ate, drank, and breathed numbers. Why, if you were a friend of Archimedes and you went to his home, you knew you had to be careful walking through his living room because he had covered the entire floor in sand so that at any time, day or night, he might walk into his living room, lie down, and start to figure out a mathematical problem in the sand. Remember, this is a long time before computers or calculators. If you went to his home in the winter and it was cold, you didn't just walk up to the fireplace and throw on a log because you might find a mathematical equation there in the ashes on the hearth. So this was the king's cousin, and it was for Archimedes that King Hiram II sent. For more titles from Jim Weiss and Well-Trained Mind Press, please visit us at jimweiss.com or welltrainedmind.com. Thank you for listening.